Gran Turismo has returned, and this past week Sony unleashed a massive demo of its latest installment, Gran Turismo Sport, allowing players to sample a wide variety of events and features just prior to release. This also means that we're finally given the chance to look closely at a near final presentation, and first impressions are very positive indeed. Today then we're going to focus on the PlayStation 4 Pro experience, primarily using its high resolution mode, which just happens to be checkerboarded to 1800p with a native 4K user interface. The results aren't quite as crisp as some other PS4 Pro titles or Forza 7 on Xbox One X, but it's still a gorgeous looking game in motion, and the Pro showcases GT Sport at its best. Now, it's no secret that the PlayStation 3 installments often felt lacking in key areas, with often unsteady performance and disappointing visual flaws, but you could see something greater beneath the surface. Gran Turismo Sport is the game that fully realizes the vision started in those last two titles. GT Sport offers an incredible level of detail in every facet of its presentation. The move to PlayStation 4 means that materials, textures, and lighting are all amped up beyond what was previously possible. By making the leap to physically-based rendering, the game features more realistic surfaces and objects throughout its environments and across the entire lineup of cars. Textures are sharper and more realistic as a result, even up close. GT retains a sense of scale that no other sim racer can quite match. The way its environments stretch out into the distance create the illusion of a much larger world. Lighting is overhauled as well, enabling many more dramatic moments in the game, while shadow resolution, while not quite optimal, is hugely improved over previous entries. Every car in the game then is loaded with detail this time. The smallest bits and bobs are rendered smoothly both in and out of gameplay, and the improved lighting and shading allow each one to blend more realistically with the environment. GT Sport's roster of cars is reduced compared to previous entries, but every car included features a super high quality premium model, complete with remarkably high quality interiors. Everything from the plastics used on the top of the dashboard to the leather stitching around the steering wheels and seats is captured with the utmost realism and it looks excellent. But more than anything else, it's the support for high dynamic range that left us most impressed. Since first experiencing HDR last year, it's become one of our favorite visual features in games. Some games do it quite well indeed. But not all implementations are created equal, and many fall short. Gran Turismo, however, has always been a series created to push the boundaries of technology, so it's no surprise that HDR plays a significant role in its presentation. Which means if you have a compatible display or method for watching YouTube in HDR, or have just joined our video service via Patreon at digitalfoundry.net, you should be watching this video in HDR mode. Everything here was captured to showcase the incredible range made possible when using HDR with GT Sport, but don't worry, if it's not an option, YouTube does automatically tone map the video for those not using HDR displays, but you will definitely lose some of the spectacle. Now, the first thing I want to mention here is the HDR setup process itself. GT Sport is in a league of its own, offering users full control over their HDR experience. When enabling HDR, a configuration page allows you to match the HDR10 output to your television to get the best picture. For instance, if you're using an LG display with the reduced brightness while using HDR game mode, GT Sport allows you to overcome this entirely. More games could learn from this implementation. Now as for the presentation itself, there are several elements which come together to define it. It begins with the rendering of the sky. The increased color depth and brightness of HDR allow the sunlight and clouds to exhibit a level of brightness closer to reality. After all, even on a cloudy day, the sky produces a level of brightness that exceeds what a digital display can produce, but HDR at least allows the game to get much, much closer than a standard display. Then there are the head and tail lights featured on the cars themselves. The contrast of high intensity lights with the environment works brilliantly here again, contributing to the sense of realism. The headlights on each car are intricately modeled, with every LED element and bulb being fully represented and modeled, with light emanating from the individual pieces in a fashion that is incredibly realistic. 
GT Sport is big on contrast, no doubt, and nowhere is it best demonstrated than here. Night racing in the stadium is similarly impressive, with high-intensity lights strewn around the track contrasting against the deep, dark night sky. The combination of the two enables a striking presentation that successfully duplicates the feeling of being in a brightly lit stadium at night. And this is what HDR is all about, being able to combine high-intensity portions of the image with shadowy regions. The mix of the two is incredible to behold, and few games do it better. So if you're looking for a game to showcase what you can do with HDR, Gran Turismo Sport is an excellent choice. So looking at the visuals as a whole, the end results are incredibly vibrant and sharp. That's not to say there aren't issues, there are plenty of nitpicks one could fire at the game. For instance, if you look closely, things like the billboard trees and lack of detail in certain parts of the background do stick out, but during gameplay, it's absolutely beautiful. When moving over to things like replays, however, the post-FX pipeline is also hugely improved here, enabling more realistic replays with very natural motion blur, featuring a huge number of samples. This is true of the various cinematic segments featured throughout the game as well. So, the high resolution mode looks great then, but how does it run? Based on our experience, the overall level of performance here is incredibly consistent. We had an incredibly difficult time encountering any slowdown at all during gameplay, which means if it does occur, it should be very, very rare. The races all play back very smoothly at 60 frames per second, a level of performance that was often missed in the PS3 installments. So we're basically looking at a locked 60 frames per second 99% of the time, at least in the types of races available in this demo. But one of the most exciting performance-related features for pro owners is found exclusively in replays. When using the 1080p mode, which thankfully features a high level of multi-sampling anti-aliasing, GT Sport bumps its replays up to 60 frames per second from 30. Now, it's not 100% locked, as these sections with all the cars on screen do still exhibit minor dips, but most of the replay is very, very stable, and it looks incredible. But why is this a big deal? Well, just look at it. I feel that it helps highlight the beauty and fidelity of the visuals in a way that the normal 30 frames per second replays do not. Remember, if you play at 1800p or on a standard PlayStation 4, all replays are limited to just 30 frames per second, which unfortunately has become the standard for many years. 60 frames per second replays were a huge feature in Gran Turismo 3 and 4 on the PlayStation 2, but the PS3 era of GT lost this, as did basically every other racing game. Whether it's every single Forza game, or Project Cars 1 or 2, or really any other major racing game, replays have been capped at 30 frames per second for more than a decade on consoles in order to showcase the highest quality visuals. With GT Sport, however, a resolution sacrifice allows the system to reach the vaunted 60fps update during replays on a PS4 Pro. This also includes things like the pre-race menus and all the other 3D rendered aspects of the UI. Everything is 60 frames per second on the Pro at 1080p. Which brings us to an interesting limitation of the game. When you output at 1080p, you have the option of choosing to prioritize frame rate or resolution, which is great as it's basically allowing super sampling within the game itself. When you output at 4K, however, this is grayed out and you're stuck at the higher resolution. Since the gameplay is pretty much already locked at 60 frames per second, I feel that one extra option that I would love to see here is the choice to prioritize frame rate specifically for replays, allowing the main game to continue running at 1800p, while replays instead are dropped to 1080p in order to update at 60 frames per second. Beyond that, the rest of the menu is quite good, and this brings me to one last aspect of the presentation, the user interface itself. Gran Turismo 3 on the PS3 was bogged down by a slow, unwieldy interface. It made getting around the game a chore, thanks to all the loading, but with GT Sport, Polyphony has retaken the crown. The interface on offer here is, simply put, an absolute pleasure to use. The fonts and graphics choices are perfect. All assets are rendered at 4K, and transitions between the different menus are buttery smooth. Moving around the streamlined menu system just feels great, and helps contribute to a cohesive overall presentation. Even better, it's fast. Very fast. Moving between the modes couldn't be better, and there is no real waiting when leaving a race to return to the home menu either. 
This is all backed up with beautiful background imagery that flows in and out as you navigate the menu system. Now this may seem like a small thing on paper, but an interface this clean and polished makes for a more cohesive and enjoyable experience overall. This is the best work Polyphony Digital has produced to date in this regard. Overall then it's fair to say that Gran Turismo Sport is exceeding expectations. The earlier showings of the game were less than impressive in many ways, but Polyphony Digital has made great strides this time around, solving many of both the demo and previous game's issues. The visuals are of course much better, but it's the overall experience that impresses the most. From the slick menu system, the seamless online integration, and the smart design choices, it just feels incredibly welcoming and engaging to jump into. Oh, and one last point. Based on what Polyphony has said in the past and with our own experiences with this demo, Gran Turismo Sport appears to be free of microtransactions and loot boxes, a trend which I'm not very happy about. GT6 did feature some minor microtransactions though, so it's great to see the team walk back on that idea. Ultimately, if you're a lapsed fan of GT, this might be a great entry point back into the series. A lot has changed since the numbered entries, but what's here is fantastic and the visuals are top notch, especially if you have an HDR display. But that's all for now though, if you enjoyed this video be sure to like, subscribe and follow us over on Twitter and until next time, this is John returning to Standard Dynamic Range. <laughs>